what people got to get out there more and see those places firsthand see the beauty of those places go snorkeling in a creek or pond or wherever um wherever you are so i mean the places i've looked for these uh have been in thailand um cameroon where i did a collecting trip uh with a group uh, a couple years back and um leticia in the amazon and the places I would look for are obviously, the big rivers are hopeless. You can't see anything in there. But the smaller ones, you can get a GoPro in there. And if it's clear or black water and clear, you can get some good footage and some really nice and interesting scenes. And you get to see what a real wild habitat looks like, how the fish behave. And mm -hmm. very exciting for me to see some of my favorite aquarium fish in the wild. Yeah. in the actual wild habitat doing their thing and just living there what's your favorite see, place you've oh, been to it, what's that what's the favorite place you've been to because you're, you're describing still, emotions that i want to hear that where that place i would happens. still say cameroon is very high up there because it was such an arduous and difficult trip you know the roads were terrible but the people were really really friendly really nice and the places were just amazing there were some just some gorgeous locations with black volcanic rock uh, in rivers and Anubias growing in huge, you know, stands of Anubias, uh, huge areas of crinum and, uh, and Nymphaea, the, the water, tiger lotus and so on. And you get to see how they actually grow in the wild along a stream and how the fish behave around them and where the different fish live. Like all the little electrical fish and mormorids are in these branches and roots under the bank where the banks undercut and that's where you would catch them and then all a lot of the cichlids go along the plant line along the middle and you get to see how the gravel gets strewn out and stuff and see how does actually nature scape mm. how does that's nature I scape i think that's what rocks, i'll do for that tank. plants and wood and everything the mormons they're and it's yeah. yeah i think that's what i'll do i think i might do one of those tanks Maybe the elephant mouse. Maybe something pretty. Oh, with yeah, I love those fish. I think they're one of my favorites. But I want really. to do just them. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. Species only tank. Maybe, maybe some sort of a tetra, I guess, just for a little more action. But they're just incredibly interesting to look at, and they mm -hmm. do have like, uh, depending on the species, they do have long like little noses, hmm. and they're pretty cool. So I I managed to catch some species I was looking for when I was in Cameroon, and I had made a little device to find them which is a piezoelectric device. So this is just made from a little device attached to some headphones and some metal rods. And you stick those in the water and you will hear the electrical signal from them converted no. into sound. Yeah, yeah, That's so you can cool. hear like zit, 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 or <laughs> zzz, zzz, zzz. And you know that they're there because you can hear them. No and shit. so you know that you can set a trap for them or whatever. Um, to get them uh, and you know where they are so and you even could identify which species if you get good enough with it because they all sound different everyone has their own frequency their own signature what would be and, your top um, three favorite species uh, of uh, mormorids yeah okay that's would be definitely campula mormoris uh, numenius which is the one with a really 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 long nose sometimes it gets as long as the entire rest of the body oh right no. <laughs> um, and, and, I like that. and that's and that's not like those uh, you know Nathanemus Petersi the elephant noses that you see every day that has a kind of thing on its chin a barbell on yeah, its chin it's on the this chin, has yeah. a super long bone snout with the mouth at the very end the terminal end oh they and eat with they, it oh yeah they eat with that because this is Campylomormorus it's a different genus it's a totally different fish and a whole group of fish and they're amazing because the way they feed is they feed only on basically um, bloodworms like these gnat larvae or, or these like almost like mosquito larvae that live inside these holes inside of clay in the bottom of the river. And those nothing can reach those insects there except the Campylomormorus, which is evolved to put its long curved snout right into the hole and suck those little insects out. Um, by the tens of thousands, I guess, every day. Those things get big. Some of them are get almost a meter long, some of these fish. And then the, the other one I love is Oxymormorus bulengeri, which is a long, uh, it's a long sinuous fish with a long trumpet-like snout. 
Um, and they're really interesting and un- unusual fish. I just tried Nothing to spell that. Like them. <laughs> I just tried to Nothing Google it. I like had to give up. <laughs> <laughs> and then my other favorite of those, um, I actually really like the Marcusinius species. So they're, they look like an elephant nose, but they instead of having the long thing on the chin, they just have a little short thing on the chin. But they school together in a group and they need like a fast current and they look amazing so i used to have a group of those and they they're just amazing looking fish and what's so cool about them is just the behavior you get to watch them interacting and talking to each other with the electrical fields which they have in their tails so they'll actually go tail first toward at each other and they're they and they're having a very animated conversation about something maybe hierarchy or courtship and things like that and these fish have big brains some of them have the brain size is the same as a human uh proportionately to the yeah, body proportion i was gonna so, say, that'd be a big head on that fish because <laughs> they only get like, <laughs> like a bobble you, head you can like see, <laughs> four to six you can inches, see the bulging head like yeah yeah you can see their bulging cranium where they have this extra big brain for their body size and some of these fish like the so-called dolphin freshwater dolphin they will yeah. play. They'll play with a ball. They'll balance a ball on their tail. Now, how smart are they? I don't know. But at least as smart as a cat, for sure. A they're freshwater able to dolphin. Play. From the Amazon, yeah. right? They're like the they're actually big. There's a couple, few hundred pounds. Those, those are African fish as well. So okay, not the actual freshwater dolphin, but it's something they call a freshwater dolphin. And it's not a dolphin at all, of course. Oh, it's a okay. Fish. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Yes, and it's oh, you know just like they call some of those fish them. baby whales, and they are not baby whales, but they have a whale-like shape, and oh. these have a sort of dolphin-like. Oh, shape. I need them. I have so, a new favorite fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're super yeah, cool looking. They're they're awesome. Some of them get about a meter long too. They would be really impressive monster fish if if anyone bothered to keep them. That's the point. Uh, you know, you see them once in a while, very rarely. Yeah. 